This video will contain spoilers from the off, so remember, you've been warned. Wow, what an episode that was. It was a very different type of episode for the show to put out, and it's one that I would most similarly compare to Shut Up and Dance from Season 3. Which is quite fitting, considering one of the characters in this episode is called Kenny, just like in Season 3. Whilst not having a technology that impacts an individual, or focusing on a society and the way that it changed with the implementation of it, this episode did what Black Mirror does best, and that's to depict the demise of a character in front of our very eyes. Focusing on Davis and Pia looking to make a film on a crime that was committed in Davis's hometown several decades ago, with the need of an angle to make it more personal and unique, that very thing did end up happening. So let's break down and explain all that there was to take away from this episode, whilst also calling out some easter eggs. Here is Black Mirror Season 6 Lock Henry Ending Explained. This episode did a great job at giving us everything during the first half and allowing it to all make sense when the reveal happened right at the end. During the beginning of the episode, we had the focus on the mask in the first couple of minutes which was on the wall, which would ultimately go on to become synonymous with the killings that took place. We saw the lack of signal that was present in the area that Davis and Pia was in, which tied into the fact that Pia needed to abandon the house for her safety. There were the tales of people getting lost out in the open and never being found, which connected to Pia being claimed by the outdoors, plus the odd nature of Janet, which was something that made sense due to her ending up being involved with Ian in the murders. We were told the story of Ian Adair, who was revealed to be a killer that tortured and murdered eight individuals in the area. It was said that it was once an area that was thriving with tourists due to the landscapes that were present. But since the incident, all of those years ago, it was a place where everybody fled from and nobody wanted to visit. It was once Pia found out about the gruesome case that she wanted to investigate further and do a documentary on it. She was a filmmaker along with Davis and she wanted to make something that people would enjoy watching. Even though Davis was reluctant to due to his connection to it and the fact that his father died shortly after. However, they did ultimately end up doing it. But upon making it and pitching it to historic productions, they mentioned how there was nothing that was really that unique about it and that they should lean in on the personal connection. This was the fact that Davis's father Kenny was injured after going round there to check on Ian. He was fired at and ultimately ended up dying after contracting an illness whilst in hospital. It was during the digitizing process that Pia stumbled across a VHS tape which had footage of the missing couple, Dawn and Simon Chalice, in the dungeon beneath Adair's house, and Kenny, Davis's father, was present there, and almost like he was leading the situation. Ian Adair came across as an individual who was being exploited and used into being a facilitator in what was going on. However, the real dark point was when Janet, Davis's mother, stepped out into the room in the haunting red mask and proceeded to commit evil acts, showing that she was also involved. They were a serial killer couple that had Ian Adair also involved too. Everything we were told and the story that existed of the gruesome murders up until that point was only half true. This was what caused Pia to run out into the open space and hide. However, after escaping, she ended up falling over in the lake and hitting her head on a rock, tying into the harshness of the environment that was present and what was told to us earlier on in the episode. With the idea of being caught and found out, Janet got all of her evidence out of the box that she kept and she had one last chuckle at it, which was something that was extremely haunting. And then she left her son a note before ultimately ending it. I thought this note was going to say forgive me, but it was only right at the end that we saw that the note read, for your film, providing an extremely dark, stomach-sinking moment which showed that she had no remorse for her actions and that she didn't regret what she did in the slightest. To me, this episode really symbolized how one can often look at these cases and documentaries from an outside perspective and see the entertainment value in them, rather than seeing the real human aspect of it, like we often see when we watch them on Netflix ourselves. However, it's only once that personal connection is made that things start to lose the entertainment aspect of them. Pia was excited to be able to make it due to not being connected to it, but once she was, she was fearful and she ended up dying. Davis was on board with doing it. He won a BAFTA, became a known name, but he lost everything in the process of it. We saw the detachment that was present when Stuart was on the phone cheering in his busy pub, with members of the public wearing red masks as if Janet was some kind of fictional character. The lack of understanding on Stuart's side that this documentary that he was cheering for was about Davis's own family, and the fact that they were horrific killers was non-existent. 
Like I said, it's as if they were characters in a TV show. Stuart's father, however, wasn't over what occurred due to the connection that he had with it. So I think it's definitely symbolic of the way that we can often view things and the detachment that one can have. Now let's move on to the Easter eggs. There weren't actually that many Easter eggs in this episode. It's often strange because in one episode of Black Mirror, it will be a world where Twitter doesn't exist and they're using smithereens. However, this was not that world. This was a world where almost none of the technology that we came to know over the show existed. This was set more in the Michael Callow National Anthem and Hated in the Nation universe. In terms of the Easter eggs, I think a little homage to a previous episode was the fact that Davis's father was called Kenny, a person who ended up being a serial killer. And in the episode Shut Up and Dance, Kenny was an individual who ended up being arrested and as well was committing horrific acts. There was a poster for the Callow Years, which was a documentary series about Michael Callow, who was the Prime Minister from Season 1, Episode 1, The National Anthem. There was also a shot where there were a ton of Black Mirror stickers on Davis's laptop. There was Waldo from the Waldo moment, plus there was also the grain, Tokasoft, and also the white bear symbol. When Pia went to go on her phone to call Davis due to finding out about his mother, in her recently called section, we saw that she had spoken to Kelly and Yorkie, so she must have known them from her time in the States. During a lot of the newspaper articles, we saw that Michael Smart was featured on the front page for most of them for a number of different reasons. Plus, we also saw that a documentary that was created for San Junipero was nominated for a BAFTA. So whilst there weren't a ton of Easter eggs like the first episode, they still managed to squeeze in a few for us to spot. Overall review. I thought this was a really good episode of the season, and a great one that stands up when compared to the rest of the show. It's very different and is probably the least Black Mirror-y, but I don't mind that. Shut Up and Dance was, and that's still considered one of the greats. I don't think this will be remembered as one of the greatest of all time in the show, but it's one that was definitely enjoyable to watch. I really like the way that we were led down one path and then the rug was pulled from underneath us right at the end, and we were given a huge twist. I expected something, but I didn't expect everything to just change like that. The most haunting scene was when Janet did what she did, but also when Davis looked at the note. It was three words that outside of the context that we saw weren't sinister at all, but in this situation, it really was. I also found the fact that he kept it with him in his pocket to be quite a dark thing to do. Could he potentially have that darkness embedded within him? I think it's something that the character would definitely think about. Black Mirror doesn't need the technology to allow it to shine, and I think this episode proved that. We had an episode that just allowed us to take a dark look into a small area in Scotland which had a history that destroyed the town but how it was all one big lie. While stuff heavily compared it to Shut Up and Dance, I wouldn't say that it is better than that episode, but this one is a good one. I thought all of the cast did a great job, and I also loved the visual storytelling of the case as it happened in the documentary style when they were in the pub. I thought that was a nice touch. Overall, I'd say this was a pretty good episode. So, there you have it. Black Mirror Season 6 Lock Henry Ending Explained. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of this episode? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.